Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Math 30-1, Chapter 6, Section 5, Trig Functions, Notes, Part 2. Now, here we want to graph y equals sine of x. And y equals 3 sine bracket x minus pi over 3 close bracket plus 1. So, so here, I'm going to pause the recording. No, I'm not going to pause the recording. You pause the recording, graph both of these so we know what the actual answers are. Seriously, do it. While you're doing that, the function here, a is 3, b is 1, c is pi over 3, plus pi over 3, and d is 1. The original function, 0, do something like this, halfway between this 1, so we'll go 1. That's the original function. The main it's a real range minus one to one. Now, so when we're doing this, C bad. So we do our phase shift C first, pi over three to the right. So this graph. moves pi over 3 to the right. So it starts at pi over 3 instead of 0. Notice it goes a little bit beyond. Oops. Now, then what do we do? B, the um, horizontal shift or the changing the period. We're not changing the period. What do we do next? A, the amplitude again happens to be 3. So this graph gets stretched vertically by a factor of 3. And the advantage of Mr. Graphing Calc oh, sorry, Mr. Computer is in theory I can do that. So we start here. There we go. We go up. Uh, let me see how close is that. Too much. There we go. Same graph stretched vertically by a factor of 3. Not my best drawing, but you get the idea. And then D is a vertical stretch, sorry, a, horse, a vertical displacement by a factor of 1, so it ends up looking like this. Okay. So this is pretty much the same thing as the other graph, except for C, the phase shift starting out. And our new range will be minus 2 to 4, and I'm not going to bother proving that because life is too short. Okay. Now, next graph, cos of x and y equals 3 cos of 2x minus a half minus 1. WTF. This one's a little nasty. Err. So, here, a couple of things. Standard trick, y is equal to 3. First, what's my b value? 2, which means I factor 2 out of everything. So that becomes what? Come on. All right, don't tell me. Sorry, brain fart there. Um, that would be pi over 4, wouldn't it? Yes, I multiply that by 2 and I get pi over 2. <sighs> Getting old. Anyway, so here A is 3, B is 2, C is pi over 4, and D is minus 1. So, while you're graphing this, I'm going to do the original cosine graph. We start at 1, pi over 2, minus 1. The original cosine graph goes like that. Not the best drawing, but you get the basic idea of what I'm trying to do. Come on. There we go. There we go. Domain. X is all real. Range minus 1 to 1. What are we doing to it? A lot. So, doing C bad. So, 
C is pi over 4, so the entire graph moves to the right, pi over 4. Come on, you can do it. So like that. Okay? Now the next thing is the period. Or sorry, the horizontal shift, or the period. So the original period is 2 pi. We're dividing that by b, which is, wait, I'm sorry, I should be more specific here. Oh, come on, stop that, people are watching. So the period becomes pi. That is, it gets squished. Do this easily. Yes. Okay. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. All right. My apologies. So it gets squished like this. Uh, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Now, where was I? Right, now I apologize. It was this long. Now it becomes half as wide like this. But it starts at pi over 2. So there we go. There's our new graph there. That's our B. Now, A, amplitude is a vertical stretch of 3 again. I like 3. I'm going to have to go back and change that. So that will go to minus 3 down here and plus 3 up here. So there's that. And D is minus 1, which means the whole graph moves down 1. Okay? So the new range is... Minus 4, comma, 2. Now I can prove that. Ay plus d. I'm just lazy. Minus 1 times 3 is minus 3. Plus 2 is... Move down 1. Yes, 3 times minus 3. Minus 1 is, sorry, minus 4. 3 times plus 1 is 4. 4 minus 1 is... Oh, God help me. Minus... Ugh. I'm going to speak English. Minus 1 times 3 is minus 3. Minus 1 becomes minus 4 in total. Plus 1 times 3 is plus 3. Minus 1 becomes 2. God, I am getting old. I apologize, humans. I should be better than that. Should. Anyway. 10 and domain and range sign. Okay. All right, let's do the tangent one quickly. Now, tan is a little sneaky. Now, I did tell you in chapter 6.4, you had to know what the tan graph looks like. So, you realize it goes... Uh, goes... Like that. Now, I'm doing this rather crudely and quickly because for two reasons. One, you're supposed to know roughly what it looks like. And two, you don't see a lot of tan graphs on the diploma because with the ABCD, with the, uh, the A value or the amplitude, it's very difficult to draw. But here, A is 1, B is 1, sorry, B is a half, sorry. C is 0 and D is 0. So period is pi divided by a half, which is 2 pi. So everything gets stretched out. Okay? Now, this is important. The original graph is here. What happened? It gets stretched twice as far. So we could come on like this, which means my asymptote gets stretched out twice as far. This y-intercept, this x-intercept, the pi becomes two pi here. So there we go. It looks something like that. Now domain, the original function, x is all real. X cannot equal 
pi over 2 plus 2 n plus 1 over 2 pi. In the range, y is all real. Now, what happens here? Sorry, you understand? The, sorry, the domain changes. So everything gets multiplied by 2. So the new domain becomes x cannot equal pi plus 2n plus 1 times pi. All right, that's odd numbers. So that becomes pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi, where n is an integer. Now I'm doing this as an example because this is how you write out odd numbers. n is 1, you get 3. n is 2, you get 5. n is 3, you get 7. So it's 1 pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi, 9 pi, 12 pi, 9 pi, 11 pi. Sneaky. Now do I expect you to know that? For the diploma, maybe. For the test, I'm not quite that evil. Anyway, I'm going to pause it here because this video is getting long. And then we're going to, if you've got any more questions, shoot me an email. Otherwise, we'll go on and finish these.